Hello. Hello. Hey. Hey. How you doing? Hey. Hey. Working. <laughs> working, working, as usual. <sighs> That's what's up. That's what's up. Driving these trucks is like 24 hours a day. That's uh mm-hmm. that's what that's and breathe trucking. That's what we do, you know, get up from the get up from the back, jump right into the seat. All you have to do is stay a minute, just take your time. The clock is ticking, so stay. All you have to do is stay. That's tomorrow, and that is it for us today, and we will leave you with a I can't do it. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll do it live. Fuck it. Do it live. I can. I'll write it and we'll do it live. And thing sucks. Five, four, three. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We're doing it live. We're doing it real big over here at Lockout Men Podcast. Thank you very much for being here. I appreciate it. The LOM community in the building. What's going on? What's going on? Make sure y'all hit them like buttons. You know what I'm saying? Lights is free up over here. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to pay for it. You don't have to pay for it. If you like, if you like to hook a brother up, go ahead and do that. I'm just saying. Well, I am your humble host over here, Lockout Men, and welcome to the Lockout Men podcast show for this morning. I am back again with another podcast interview, as always, because, you know, I set this stuff up so far in advance, but it really, really don't come out. But I'm sharing it with you guys, LOM community, what's going on? If you guys like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell for more. Make sure you hit that all button for all the content that I release. I appreciate you guys. If you want to support me and the channel, hit a brother up in the cash app. You know what I'm saying? Lockout men. That's dollar sign. Lockout men. You know what I'm saying? Hook a brother up with some coffee or something like that. All right, in today's episode, we got a young lady, young lady trucker, as always, young lady trucker over here, you know what I'm saying? I don't know how long she's been in the game because, you know, we was in the green room for a little bit, but she's going to come and tell you guys how long she's been in the game, you know what I'm saying? I would like to bring to the show, Queen. And by the way, that is... That is Queen with a K. Queen with a K. Right, right. I, I need I, I need to know. The community need to know. Why 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 the um uh, why the spelling of Queen with the K? What's up with that? Because I'm unique, as usual. As always. I like to be different. I don't like to be of the ordinary. Uh, you like to be different. You, you, you oh. so you out of the box. Mm-hmm. You 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 a female truck driver that decides to decides to do things out of the box, do things different. What mm-hmm. makes what before I get that? What before I even you know get you to you know introduce yourself and all that good stuff? What uh what what sets you what what sets you different? You know what I'm saying? What 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 makes you different than? Then set what sets you apart from other drivers out here, other female drivers out here. Um, I'm gonna always do things my way. Always. So you give me a way to do it, you you tell me what's your best logic on something, and I'm gonna take it, snip it, and do it my way. What's what's suitable for me? Because everything that's always work best for everybody. I'm a I'm gonna be safe while doing my job. But I'm going to do it Dave's way or Queen's way. Okay, okay, Queen. That's what's up. That's what's up, Queen. All right. So let the people know where you uh where you from. Uh, what, what's your where, where you from and everything? Um, I am from Atlanta, Georgia. Born, raised, and currently still reside in Atlanta, Georgia. Now, uh, the best. 
Now, this ain't to be. Now, a lot of you guys, uh, well, you you was born and raised in Atlanta, Georgia. So take me back a little bit. What what was life like for you in Atlanta, Georgia? Oh, um, what's the little thing? You know, they say like you was born with a, a silver spoon or something like that. So I kind of grew up with the, like a better end, you know, with the, the better side of the stick um, as far as like my childhood, you know, not really wanting for anything. Um, I was spoiled. Mm. So, I mean, life was great. Life was great. I mean, I, my my job as a child was to make good grades and behave. Ain't that supposed? So, ain't, ain't that supposed to be the job of every child? Is the behave? Yeah, and but get it doesn't happen. Grades? It doesn't. It doesn't happen. Nah, so, and I was rewarded for my good grades and good behavior. So I got everything I wanted. Okay. Okay. So, you know, so that 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 mentality stuck with me all the way to adulthood and. Still, I do. I I buy by that now. This, you do good, you get good. It sounds like you. It, it sounds like you. Are, well, let me before I say this. Before I say this, are is both your parents? Was both your parents in your life when you was growing up? Yes. Okay. So still are. So it, now I can say what I'm about to say. It sounds like you're a daddy's girl. Oh, I am. I'm. I'm both. But see. A lot of what's instilled in me did come from my dad because he raised me as if he had a son to never to be able to go out there and get it by any means necessary. Um, there's a lot of my like my thought process. I like even in relationships, guys tell me you got the mentality of a man. You know, I just I don't know. I get a lot of things from my dad, my ways, you know, my my character. A lot of just a lot of me is. A lot of my dad is in me. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up, and that's good. That's good to know. You're you're the only child, or you you got uh you got siblings. It's just me, just mm. me. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So what? I ain't have to share nothing. <laughs> so what? What did your family, your your mom, your mom and pops, how they felt when you came to them one day and just said, "Hey, I want to be a truck driver." What do you guys think? Oh, okay, well, let me run this back a little bit. Okay, so okay. So, I could not, my dad, my dad has been a truck driver my entire life. Okay, okay. I used to always, I used to always pick at him and be like, who's going to drive a truck? I'm not doing that. Who's going to sit inside of a box? And I don't even like driving that much to want to do that. Mm-hmm. I went to college. Uh, I did five years at the University of West Georgia, got my psychology degree. Okay. And literally, literally, my junior year of college, my dad showed me, because he has his own trucking business, mm-hmm. so my dad showed me a paycheck from what just two of his trucks had made, what he had made, like his cut, after he had paid his drivers from two trucks, and it was like ten, eleven thousand dollars $11,000 in one week. I said, oh, I'm about to drop out of college. Which I, I'm not going to say, you know, I'm not going to push, you know, dropping out because it's not, college is for people. It may not be for some people. But I was like, oh, I got to do that. I, I need to I need to be a truck driver. They're making money. Now, and now stop. So stop. I, I, hold I, up. It, hold up. See, that's, okay, okay. Now, yo. Wait, 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 wait. wait, wait. Uh, okay, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. No, 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 no. Go ahead. Go okay, ahead. Okay, so, so my whole thing was I wanted to do something that I was always, my career choice, I wanted to do something I was comfortable doing, something that I enjoyed doing, and something that I made good money at. Because I have a very expensive taste, so I knew the income got to match the, what, I'm, what I'm spending out. You get what I'm saying? The income got to match the outcome. So I knew, I was like, oh man, it sounds like, is driving really going to be that bad? But I, I, went, I didn't drop out. I finished college. I finished the last year and a half. Um, and two weeks after my graduation, I had enrolled in trucking school. I didn't tell anybody until my graduation party. I announced it at my graduation party. And nobody believes me. No, my, none of my family, my friends, they're like, yeah, right, she's lying. Two weeks later, Monday morning, I was up 7 a.m. for trucking school in class. 
And my parents was like, what? I can, they could not believe it, but they were proud because we, we, we see the success from my dad doing it. My mom is in logistics as well. So my, my big, my parents' biggest thing was me being out on the road at such a young age and being a female truck driver. That was their biggest issue, but we overcame it and I did it. Hey, and I love it. Okay. That's what's up. So. You you actually got inspired just by seeing how much your father was was bringing in. Now you gotta now you gotta backtrack a little bit, just a little bit, okay? Because you know your father put in the work to to establish himself to get where he at. Now just because you saw what he was making, now you was an outsider looking in like, oh well, he's making that kind of money. What was the what was the reality? for you when you actually got into the got into the industry like when you first got with the comp got with the company you went out training and and all that good stuff and then all of a sudden you start seeing your paychecks how did how did reality okay. hit you on that okay so um i had to pay my dues and i didn't like you said i didn't i didn't know that then I didn't. I knew that I was gonna have to get my experience. I had to start from the bottom and work my way up. So I wasn't expecting at ten, eleven thousand at all. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I was thinking like six, seven hundred dollars. You know, like oh, okay, okay. okay. So started. you was thinking on the low end. So yeah, because I didn't own the company. See, he he owns the company. So he was gonna see you know magnificent numbers. You know, mm -hmm. but I was I had to be realistic with myself. So I was thinking, okay, if I made six, seven hundred dollars, I'm twenty two, twenty three years old at the time. I'm like, that's still good. That's you know, I can deal with that, you know. But I literally, I went to, um, I went to Snyder. Um, I did an intermodal division right out of trucking, trucking school, which is very rare to be able to go into that division. Um, my first paycheck was over thirteen hundred dollars. Okay, I said, what? Okay, so that I was surprising. What I, yeah, I doubled what I expected. That is not the case for everybody, but I did thirteen hundred dollars. So you can't tell me nothing. <laughs> um, I and my training was very, very. It it wasn't um long and drug. It wasn't over a matter of months. I did three weeks in Chicago, and I only did one week in a truck with somebody. Um, and we did a local route. And it was it was a breeze. It was easy. I I mean, their training process was. I, I honestly really liked it because it prepared me for real life situations. You know, you know, they put you on the um simulated the little simulated truck mm -hmm. and put you like a deer running out in front of you, somebody slamming on their brakes in front of you, or what somebody walking out, and even a um tire blow, a steer tire blowing out, and literally. I had I I faced a steer tire blowout my first month of driving. Okay. So by me being on that simulated to you know it prepared me in in case of uh, you know a situation if that ever happened and then it actually did happen I knew how to handle the situation knew not to panic knew the you know hold the steering wheel tight you know get your uh pivot point of where you know what direction you need to drive in you know to keep the steering wheel straight keep the truck straight you know and stuff like that. And I, you know, I mastered that situation, and I wow. and it blew like the tire blew off like with cars right next to me, you know. So just you know, maintaining my lane and everything. So, so was you was you scared? Yeah. Uh, was you scared when 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 the when you had a steer tire blow out? Because when a steer tire blow out, it's like an explosion. Yes, yes. Um, I I was. I was terrified, but I knew I'm I'm rolling down the road. I'm going 65 miles per hour. I can kill my, I, you know, you can take your life or someone else's life. So it's, you have, you get into that safety mode, you know, like do what you got to do. Kind of like you, you fear get kicked out of the window. Yes, I was scared, but it's like you, you have to tackle the situation. You have to handle it to the best of your ability. I've been, I was trained, you know, to know what to do in that type of situation. I have to make sure that other people around me, you know, are safe. I have to, you know, make sure I'm safe. I don't want to die. You get what I'm saying? I got you. So that split, that split second of fear, it just became like, you know, like a 
mother's instinct, like, you got to protect the kids. Like, I got to protect me and everybody around me. So I had to do what I had to do. Okay. Now, after the fact, it was like, oh, a sigh of relief. Oh, my goodness. I can't believe I did it. You know, like, that really just happened. Why me? You know, I'm questioning. But the panic mode came after I done made sure I done got to the side of the road, made sure everybody else safe around me. I'm, you get what I'm saying? I got you. I got so, you. So. But, yes, it, it was. it's a scary It's a scary situation, especially when it happens out of nowhere. You can't, you know, you can't just predict that that's about to happen. So first, so it, it so, you off guard. so first, so first year out of the gate, experienced a, a, a steer tire blowout, and you was able to uh, you was able to conquer your fear and get over to the uh, side of the curve and uh, and uh, make sure everything was safe for you and the people around you. That's uh that's awesome right there. I would give you an applause, but I don't have it set up right there. But uh. <laughs> we'll give you an applause for that. Well, thank you. But very good, very good. Um, where did you where did you start? I mean, you you mentioned Snyder. Uh, so you did you go to did you go to Snyder Trucking School or did you go to a trucking school and then you went to Snyder? How, how did you come across to getting your uh, CDLs? I went to um, West Georgia Technical College. Okay in LaGrange, Georgia, and um, I did, the school was eight weeks long, um, I think I finished in about six weeks, though. How much, how, how much, how much the college charge you for, for, uh, what was it, a, you said eight weeks, so how much did they charge you for an eight-week course? You won't believe it, I paid $198 for taking school. No, I don't believe you, you paid how much? $198. Come on. Come on, Queen. So, come on now. Come on now. I promise come on, you. Come I, on I, now. I, I, I kid come you on, not. Come on now. I kid you not. Come on let now. Me, let me tell you. Let me spill the tea. I'm going to spill the tea for you, honey. Bruh. So, the state of Georgia has some type of grant um, that they give out. You don't, if you don't have any felonies, um, if you, I, it's, it's like, you know, three or four things that you have to qualify under to um, uh, qualify for the grant. But I applied and they gave, the, they gave me the grant. And I didn't even know about it. I literally went to the school, inquired about their um, commercial truck driving program. And the lady at the front desk told me, she said, hey, you know, you, you know, you have to have your, like, test scores and stuff like that because it's college. But I was, you know, I had just graduated from college. So they used my transcript from University of West Georgia and transferred it over to the technical school. Um, so I didn't have to, like, take an entry exam or anything like that. And she told me to go and apply for, um, like, financial aid. Mm -hmm. And I was, I think the overall cost was about, it was between three and 5000 for the school. Um, before the grant, but the state of Georgia pays like majority of it, and I only had to pay a hundred and ninety eight. Literally, my class was um, it was eight students. It was eight of us in there between the ages of twenty, twenty, and I think the oldest guy was like sixty two or fifty fifty six or something like that. And all of us qualified. Uh oh, hello, hello. Can you hear me? Oh, there you go. You're back. You're back. You kind of, kind of lost, kind of lost pressure there. All right. So you said everybody there. Oh. You said everybody there was. Uh, everybody there received the grant. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. So you. Uh, so now in school, got everything together. You. Uh, you. You got your license and everything. What made you decide? What What made you decide to go with Snyder? Uh, what what was the reason behind choosing Snyder as a first company? Um, they were not my first choice. They were an option because I knew someone who had went to um Snyder within the like three months of me, you know, going to them. Mm -hmm. so I knew someone who had just started there and, you know, he enjoyed it. He was with their band division. Um, but I was really open to whoever would allow me to be home the most 
You know, okay. and everybody goes after that Monday. They want to work Monday through Friday. They want to add a week right. off. You know, right. But also, also, I was, you know, I told you I was, I had just turned twenty three, mm-hmm. and you know, being, uh, you know, just a female in the industry. I didn't. I didn't feel comfortable sleeping at truck stops. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I knew I wouldn't get the, the best sleep being at a truck stop because I'm be too paranoid about what's going on, who who watching me, and stuff like that. Okay. So I, I definitely wanted to go somewhere where I I was home. You know, definitely every week. I didn't want to do the two three weeks out or anything like that. And so I just applied, applied, applied everywhere. The school had um, different companies come out, recruiters come out. And talk this about, you know, everybody going to butter up their company and make it look good, you know. But I was applying some of everywhere. And I remember putting in, I was still in touch in school. Um, I had like, I probably was in like my fourth week of school. And I applied one morning, sitting in class on my phone. And literally within 30 minutes, Snyder called me back. And they, they were telling me about, you know, the opportunities they had in my area. And the young lady, she said, oh, we have, a, you can do the intermodal. Um, they only go 300 miles out mm-hmm. within, you know, within their, the, the Atlanta hub. And I said, 300, that's nothing. You know, I can get back home the same day, you know? Wait, so 300, if I went out, and came miles, right is, is this 300 miles a day? They do a 300 mile radius out, you know, with, okay. you know, okay. outside of Atlanta. They only can go 300 miles out. And that's why. A lot of times I, I recommend, you know, people to go with the intermodal division if they will hire beginner drivers. With Snyder, I was the very first person for the Atlanta Hub to hire someone right out of trucking school. So a lot of times they want you to have experience. But I always tell people, if you want to get home, if you have kids or you want to get home to your family or whatever, intermodal division is the best because they only go so far out. And then they come right back. So you know, you take a load from the rail yard, you, then you have to bring something back to the rail you, yard. You mentioned you you mentioned uh you mentioned earlier uh, you said that your that your first paycheck was uh double than double than your expectation. But only doing 300, 300 miles, uh I mean three hundred so, mile radius, how how are you able to accumulate that that particular uh, size check? Okay, so I'm not sure because I've been going from Snyder for about a year or so now. But they pay by the mile, by the load. Um, you know, you get the tension pay. You get all the, they It's so many different, you know, categories of pay that they pay you. So, yes, okay, the minimum they wanted you to do was maybe like 2,500 miles a week, right? Okay. That's the minimum. Everybody they wanted you to do at least, you know, 2,000 at the bare, bare minimum. Okay. Your two thousand mark should should put you around. I'm gonna say like the eight nine hundred dollar, you know, range because you're getting paid for your stops. You're getting paid for live loads, live unloads. If it's you know, if you have that, um, if you have your, I had, I got my endorsement, so you get paid more for hazmat loads and stuff like that. So. In the end, you get detention pay. Just every, they pay so much, you know, different things. But say you do about 2,000 miles, you might see about eight, $900. But I might do 300 miles going up and then bring something back and do 300 miles back. That's 600 miles. You get what I'm saying? Okay. So I'm already, you know, about a quarter of the way of my 2,000 or 2,500 miles for the week. You get what I'm saying? Okay, okay. So you're gonna you're gonna see, you know, it's you know, you do twenty five hundred dollars, you might be at eleven hundred dollars. You do a little bit more, you might be at twenty you know, thirteen, fourteen hundred dollars. And that's before you even start seeing certain incentives. They pay out um bonuses weekly. You know, some companies pay quarterly, they pay your bonuses out weekly okay. based off of performance. Um, you know, just keeping, you know, your fuel, you know, staying within a certain MPG of fuel and stuff, stuff okay, like that. Okay. So they, um, so they, so they just pay for all so, different things. So it's a lot, it's, it's a lot of stuff that, that, that community, uh, that can't community commute. Oh, God damn it. The word is on the tip of my tongue, but I can't figure it out what I'm about to say. Damn it, man. Anyway, uh, it's a lot that goes into it that gives you that, that, 
that double the amount that you was inspected paycheck. All right. So, correct, but, uh, correct. all right. So that was your first stop. So how long, how long you been driving all together? I have been driving for three years. All right. So three years in the game. So Snyder being the first, uh, why did you, why did you leave Snyder after, you know, doing so well there? Um, because one, my dad owns his own company, so I was waiting to hit my two year mark so I could go work for my dad. Okay, hold up. Why you couldn't and work? Then, why you couldn't work for? That's what I wanted. To, you know, thank you for bringing that up. That's what I wanted to ask you because, like, right when you got your license, why you just didn't go, uh, go with your dad? Why, why your dad wanted you to, you know, wanted you to get? Okay, so go ahead. And with me having no experience. And let me let me say this because a lot of people say, "Oh, I'm gonna just go buy a truck and, mm -hmm. and run a truck, get my TDL and run a truck." No, it's not that easy. Mm -hmm. And Shane, you have to prove yourself to insurance companies. If they if you don't have any experience, no insurance is gonna want to cover you. It's too much of a liability. So me having no experience coming right out of Texas school, his insurance was not gonna pick me up without having that. They required a minimum of two years of experience. Okay. So I um. You know, I went ahead, I did my two years at Snyder, and then I left in last November, I think it was. Yep, I left the week of Thanksgiving, and I uh, went, and then I start, now I started working for my dad. But, um, yeah, the, it's, it's a lot, the insurance plays a big part in that. All right, let me, so let me. I would have been, I would have, I would have left Snyder, um, before then, if I to go to go work for my dad, before I put money in somebody else's pocket, I'm gonna keep it right in our household. You get what I'm saying? Uh, that's what's up. So let me let me say let me send so some that, shout that outs. was my process. Let me send some shout outs right quick. Well, uh, welcome to well welcome uh, Swamp Girl Marty S Marty Saint Amour uh, H Dubs the Trucker. He says good morning. Uh, NY to Japan. She gives you the hand clap for being that girl. Uh, Eric Williams, he's from H Town. H Town, what's going on? My man D Nitty and uh, Clarence Rudd. I know I mentioned you guys earlier already. You guys want to hook your brother up? Don't forget to you know support me and all like that. Make sure you give me something to drink. Uh, I'm drinking right now some Deer Park and all like that. Trying to get this weight going on. You know what I'm saying? Um. All right, so yeah, that's hot for you to for you to uh, for you to do that for your family. You want to keep the money in the family. So are you driving? Are, so you still Absolutely. you still driving for your father now, or what's what's your status now I, as far as uh, as far as your journey going? Yes, I um, am still working for my father. Okay. And we do flatbed. His company is a flatbed company. So your girl is out there being cute and throwing stuff. Okay. We don't have to chop our load. So I don't have to chop no load. But yeah, I'm I'm doing my thing in this flatbed world. Okay. So you say it's, you it's out cool. you say you out here more. being you out here being cute and throwing straps. God damn it, man. <laughs> yes. Yes, absolutely. I and I, so many people put a description on truck drivers. That's what's up. That's and I'm I'm like, you know, a truck driver, you don't, you know, they think you're supposed to wear sweatpants, a baseball cap. No, my hair don't be laid. My nails don't be laid. My lip gloss popping. Okay. I'm going to be cute. And I'm be out here trucking, doing my That's thing. That's what's up. Swamp Girl says, you go, girl. All right, so let me ask you this, man. How do you handle now, since you've been out in the game three years, you flatbed and you're doing the damn thing, looking super cute while you're doing it. But how do you handle veteran truck drivers that try to discourage you from, from, from this trucking industry? Oh, mm. good one. That is a good mm. one. Let me tell you. Well, okay. All right. It's my duty. It's my duty to to be safe, mm -hmm. to get from point A to point B to the and for especially working for my dad. I mean any company, but definitely because my dad started this he, you know, blood, sweat and tears into this company. So it we have to provide a service. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So you got truckers that's gonna sit out here, they gonna lay on the horn, they gonna tell me you moving too slow or you know, just all all of that. Or they tell you how you should do something. Look, 
like I said, like I told you at the beginning, I'm, I'm going to find Queen's way of doing mm-hmm. it. What's, what's suitable for a queen? What am I comfortable doing and how, am I, how I'm comfortable doing it? You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So what might work for Johnny down the street who's been doing it 33 years might not work for me that's been doing it three years, you know? So I, I just find my own way of doing stuff. Um, I, I, I be, I'm always safe. You know, I'm cautious about everything. With trucking, you have to drive for yourself and others. You have to predict, you know, what 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 that person ahead of you or beside you is going to do. You know what I'm saying? That's what's up. So I, I'm not one to – I can't stand those super truckers who be up on cars behind and they slam and they weave in and out. They, they, you know, jumping in these tight, you know, spaces. Everybody on the road, everybody that's driving these four-wheelers are saying, hey, Look at that truck. You know, they jump in front of you. They don't know the severity, but you as the truck driver, you're the professional driver. So you have to, you have to be the professional person in, you know, in the situation, you know, do, do what's logical, what makes sense. Everything has to, in my, in my world and my, the world that I live in, everything has to make sense. Okay. So me weaving in and out of trust, traffic and I'm 80,000 pounds, that doesn't make sense. Why do that? I'm putting me and others at harm. And like I told you, I'm all about safety. All right. So, Sw- I don't, them vets in the game, my dad, even my dad, he, he says little stuff and I be like, hand it by. You know, it worked for you, not for me. Every, so, it, I just don't pay him no mind. Every, everybody in the, co- I, I appreciate that. Er, everybody in the community is, uh, is slapping hands because you flatbedding out here. That's what's up. You flatbedding out here. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Thank you. Swamp girl, Swamp girl says that's right. You have to, you have to have your niche out here to be safe. We be trucking. What's going on, everybody? What's going on? Welcome to the, uh, welcome to the, uh, in a, the live interview that I'm having right now. Thank you, thank you. All right, so man, Queen, I mean, you, you just doing it up, man. I, I am just sitting here enjoying myself, listening to you, uh, listening to you speak, man. For thank a person you. that only has. That that only has three years in the game. You you talking like you've been in it for decades. You know what I'm saying? What's the most important thing that you have learned uh, while trucking? You cannot predict your day. You can't. It, it, you can't predict it. And you know, like I told you, I was 23 getting into trucking, so I was like, I want to be. At the clubs with my homegirls, sitting on couches, turned up, and I'm like, I can't predict when I'm gonna get off. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And and this 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 is my career. This is my industry. I first off get get my sleep. That that's first and foremost. Get my sleep. I don't play about that. And then just knowing you can't predict. I can't. Something might hold me up in traffic for two hours, so I can never predict my day. So. Don't make plans until you off. You get what I'm saying? I had to learn that. Don't make plans until you are already off because you you can't predict when what time you're gonna start, what time you know, you're gonna get to a certain location. You can give, you know, an ETA, but it's it, it, it might not be accurate. You know this and you'll get a lot of disappointment. It's, it's this uh <laughs> it's this old school truck driver that I talked to uh a while back and he has uh he has an Instagram page as well that I follow. And he's like, Uh he's notoriously hard on new drivers out here that that comes out here in this game. Uh, You 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 already said you don't let nobody nobody discourage you or nothing like that. Um, But he will probably come to you and ask you like I'm about to ask you right now. uh, You being a truck driver. Do you drive a manual or do you drive an automatic? I do them both. Okay. <laughs> I do it both. Okay, but what you driving? But you have, what, like I told what you driving right now though? Manual. Okay, see there you, there you. Damn it! I don't even have my. My and my dad's. Please. There you go. <laughs> there are no automatic trucks in my dad's fleet at all. He refuses. He he's an old school drop trucker. He. he Automatic is you just a steering wheel holder, which I, I I would prefer an automatic. I like the word smarter and not harder. Mm-hmm. But hey, either way, I'm gonna get out here. I'm gonna do my thing, and I'm 
get this money. So that's what's up. That's that is. It, what's it up. don't matter what I got a job, and that's another thing. A lot of a lot of schools are now swapping over to only teaching, you know, on, on automatics. And I, that I feel like you start changing, you know, the students, the people out here getting their CDL because. They might leave a, a major company and go work for a, for a mom and pop company, and mom and pop only have, you know, standards. So, but you're still paying the same amount of tuition for school, or you know, whatever the cost of the school is. So you're paying the same amount, but your but your credentials don't don't match up to somebody who might have got their CDL several years ago. Before the autumn, you know, they, they were big on automatic. So, do you think? Do do you think? Uh, do you think these trucking schools now uh, are are setting new drivers up for failure? I wouldn't say it's all about what what each individual makes out of it. Um, they're they're just the, the stepping stool. They're the foundation. It's up to the student to apply. You know, more. You know. You 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 have to apply more. They just gonna teach you the basics. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I can't necessarily just say they're setting them up for failure. However, I don't agree with these trucking schools that are anything less than really two months. A month that's that's way too soon. You need the experience within a month. They might not say, for instance, like weather situation. You know. I wish that I would have had to do some driving in the snow. And in Atlanta, it rarely ever snows. But I'm just saying, <laughs> I wish I would have had certain, you know, I would have certain weather conditions. Um, just all of that. I got my studio in the summertime. So it's hot, it's dry, it's, you know, you get rain here and there. But my first year, like at Snyder, it snows. So I was stuck in the snow. I didn't know what to do. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it's just, it's just, you, we need, we, like, my, my two months, like I told you, I finished in six weeks, though. Everybody, you know, you have schools that are one week, two weeks, maybe a month. That's, that's too, that's too soon, especially if they, if they're learning on a, on a standard. You get what I'm saying? So you figured. It's nothing to an automatic. You just drive. So luck, luckily for me, I was, I, I was trained in the wintertime. Uh, I, I was trained on the truck in the wintertime and I got my license in the wintertime. Actually, I got my license in December. Um, but I had my license. I just converted over to CDL in December. But, um, I feel that, uh, I, I feel that, uh, that that wintertime training is a hell of a lot better than than summertime training to me. Uh, Swamp Girl, uh, hold on right quick, hold on. Uh, we be trucking, what's going on? They says, uh, all right, sis, you breaking all stereotypes out here. Swamp Girl says, uh, Swamp Girl says, you know, driving the manual gives you control of the truck, which is true. And she also says, yes, they yes. are training on a mountain grade five percent. She also gives you a uh, thumbs up for every uh for everything. And like I said, I, I give you the thumbs up too, man, because like I said, you 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 Thank speaking, you. you you speaking like like a veteran right now. Like you're not you're not speaking as a new jack. You know what I'm saying? The the mannerisms, the, right. the the your experience, you 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 speaking like a veteran, and I I I gotta give you an applause for that, because um, because a lot of a lot of people that comes into this game don't you know don't know don't know what's up, and they need they need to listen from you know from people like yourself, you know what I'm saying? So I thank you for coming here to share your share your experience. Uh, to share your experience with us um let me see hold on right quick uh so let me ask you let, let me ask you this looking at it from a female's perspective what do you think about the what do you think about the industry how 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 you feel that the industry is going to change over the next decade looking at it from a female's perspective um first let me say that this is not a, a, a male only industry. You know, it's, it's nothing to it but to do it. So anybody can do it. Um, it's, it's a, it is a challenge in a way. 
um, to get out here, to just just being brave and actually doing it and stuff like that. As far as where the industry will be in 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 a decade, we we're like okay with all this COVID going on, we realize we are essential. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It, the world if if truck is stopped, the world stops. Mm-hmm. You can't get freight from the overseas to the airplane to the facility without it getting on a truck. So it's it's a lot of growth that can come in this industry, but there can also be, you know, a a, a lot that could affect it also. You know what I'm saying? Um, So... I like to say is we need we need our people to get out here and vote. <laughs> get out here and vote. You say get out here and vote. I hear you. <laughs> That's what's up. Okay. I mean, That's what's up. But it's just also like looking at it from uh, um, a female's perspective. What what are the what 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 could be? I mean, besides the fact that we're female and you know people, you my biggest thing is your mindset. And also, let me tell the people that are tuning in, stay tuned to what I have coming, mindset, like, focus on that mindset thing, you know, because I got a lot of things I'm doing with that. But it's your mindset. Um, And that goes for anybody in this industry. Where you are mentally tells a lot about you and your growth and where you can go in this industry. I I get, like, some people don't want to be owner operators because of the responsibility. It might not be for them. You get what I'm saying? But it's that mindset. Only you can hold you back. Only you can cause you to level up or hinder yourself. You get what I'm saying? So it 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 depends on the individual. All right, all right, all right. And it can't nobody say, yeah, the sky's the limit. People say the sky's the limit, but it's infinity and beyond. All right. Like that's why I, I be the odds. So, hey. so let me ask you, uh, let me, I, I think I've got one last question for you. So if you can go back in time and start over, right, would you would have got into trucking? Correct. And if so, what, and if you couldn't get into trucking, what would have been your plan B? Um, if I could go back in time, to oh, I got you. Fully invested. I could have I could have been much further in the industry. Um, I'm glad that I have my degree. I have something to always fall back on. But I would have definitely went got my CDL sooner. Then later. Then, correct. All right. But it's a process. Hey, it's a process. All right, Queen. With a K. That's what's up. Yes. Queen with the K. Yo, I appreciate you coming on and chopping it up with me, Queen. This this was a this was fucking awesome, I gotta tell you. I I, I really I really truly enjoyed my uh my conversation with you, man, because like I said, you 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 came in like like seriously, like a vet in this bitch. You know what I'm saying? So I do appreciate that. What tips? Or advice do you have for the new jacks that's uh that's thinking about getting out here? What, what do you have for them? Like I just said, mindset. It's your mindset. You can start. You can you can start you or you can stop you. It's up to you. It's nothing to do it. Ain't nothing to it but to do it. So do it. But I do say this: if you're going to a trucking school, get your permit before you apply for school. Mm-hmm. It, it, uh, you, you'll appreciate it because them the few weeks when you working on just getting the permit, you could be 
already pre-tripping or, you know, having more time as far as kids going with the truck. So get your permit first and then go to school. That is what's up. That is what's up. Everybody, that's Queen right there, Queen with a K. Yo, I appreciate you coming on. And if you guys want to come on and chop it up with me, you can. You can hit me up at the Gmail. That's Lockout Men Podcast at gmail.com. Or hit me up over at uh, Instagram. And, yo, look for me over there. Yo, if you, again, like this content don't forget to like subscribe comment share and hit that bell and that all button i'm going to get somebody to play me out and while they playing me out i want to say thank you to the lom community for being here watching i would like i appreciate everybody that is watching and is listening to this uh conversation yo that's it that's all queen in the house we about to go ahead and uh we about to go ahead and uh end this right quick so queen i need you to stay on for a little bit while while uh while i'm ending it everybody else y'all take it easy and i will come back to you guys again with another podcast interview thank you very much for watching and i am out peace i'm pretty upset upset i'm pretty sad i'm pretty sad Pretty upset, upset, upset. I'm gonna be with my baby.